Haha. -ha. Fooled you, didn't I? <laughs> I bet you probably thought I was about to come through the door, huh? Well, you know what? You got the right. What's up? <laughs> uh, my sense of humor is trash. What is up, everybody? Three people are gonna watch this. Gotta go. <laughs> Yes, I'm still doing this. No, I haven't cut my hair yet. Yes, I'm aware I look like a homeless man. I look like I'm about to suck somebody for a square, but still I chill. Yeah, I know. I know what I love. <laughs> you you wanna you 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 wanna know what I love? You wanna know what I love? Movies. You wanna know what my favorite movie of all time is? The most influential movie? the most pro-black movie, the most phenomenal and best cinematic piece of film to date, better than the Joker, better than, better than Black Panther, even better than, insert your favorite movie here. Yes, Hollywood Shuffle is my favorite movie Today, I guess, I, I, you know, I watch a lot of movies, and it's my favorite one. It's a great movie. It's one of my favorites. Don't quote me on that. It's one of my favorites. One of my favorites. So basically, the plot of the story can be summed up like this. This is the mode of white man stereotype of a black man. Yeah, brother. Black acting school. So, basically, this story is about a young black actor by the name of Robert Taylor, played by almighty Robert Townsend. Townsend? 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 And his aspirations to becoming an actor in the big Hollywood. Hence, title, huh? Hollywood Shuffle. You thought a bunch of was gonna be dancing in Hollywood? Robert Taylor, in his aspirations into becoming an actor, finally gets the role of a lifetime. A role that could possibly change his whole career and finally throw him. I'm talking, throw him into the career he most wants in the world. But, and a big old butt it is. But, the role he must play is a stereotypical black character. You know, the thugs, the pimps, bitches and hoes, 20 foes, that's how all my Negroes roll. I'm done with the bad jokes, not really. It's, it's for me, who gives a um, With the conflict of selling out him, selling his dignity to a company to become an actor, this movie is basically him going through the conflict of, of taking on said role. That's all I'm gonna give y'all. I suggest y'all watch it yourself. That being said, let me just tell you that this movie is a mother bop, okay? My eyes were first blessed with this movie around the age of like 12, 13, one of the, one, young. I was a, I was a child. I was a little foot, about knee high. I'm still kind of knee high. Me and my cousin found this movie in my mom's bin full of movies, and we picked it up solid, and we were like, ah, this looks like it has titties in it. We watched it. Sadly, no titties. But when I say we were not prepared for the amount of inside jokes that would have preceded us in the future, we were not prepared for the inside jokes. Let me just say, this movie truly did shape my Honey bone as a kid. Down to my aneurysms, down to my stupid dad jokes, just down to my sense of humor. This movie was just hitting that sense of humor button like And it was just Tre Magnifique. You killed it, my brother man. I ain't be got no weapon. You'll get some of those references if you watch the movie. Oh, so you wanna be an actor in the 80s? and you're black, I, I, you can do that. But you know what you gotta do first? You gotta go to Let's talk about 
talk to a graduate. Just to reference that no one will get. So, as someone of color in the film industry, I say that very loosely, not the not the person of color part, the film industry part, because obviously, uh, obviously I'm Latino. Uh, typically, you didn't really see a lot of people of color in the film industry portrayed kindly, really. You really only saw black people in films as like a slave, a thug, like a gang member, crackhead, pimp, casual character who's supposed to die in the movie, you know, like that. Basically, they depicted black people as how Caucasians at the time saw black people. Clowns. Being a person who genuinely loves watching movies and loves film, I kind of noticed that after a while. Like, when I came to a certain age and saw enough movies, I realized this is a little 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 until like you started seeing a change in like film it was only up until recently when like filmmakers of color started to kind of flip the narrative and just filmmakers in general started to do something different with character development regarding people of color not just black people just people of color which is when like you know filmmakers like like senpai ryan coogler and best boy jordan pill and you know, I guess we can throw my man Spike Lee in the basket, you know. <laughs> but, I have to say, Robert Townsend was the first to do that shit. The OG holding it down. I grew up watching a lot of like black exploitation films and a bunch of like, um, uh, like comedies and a bunch of cheesy stuff from like, you know, the 80s to like the 90s or some set, no, from like, the uh, like 70s to like 90s. That was like, I grew up watching a lot of those movies. Of course, sprinkle in some of the stuff that came out when I was alive. Um, growing up watching these films and seeing like my, well, my culture, I guess, portrayed on like film, it was only up until I saw Hollywood Shuffle where I kind of saw like a real tasteful parody of it, I guess. Hollywood Shuffle is meta as f so just seeing like jokes tailored to what felt like specifically me and I continue to feel that way literally up until now is very kind of big on me. Like that impacts me quite a lot. I don't really see that too often. I mean, I see it, you know, with shows like at Atlanta, like the stuff that Donald Glover is doing and then you see stuff that Jordan Peele is doing and then you see stuff that just comedy as a whole and more people are comfortable talking about it and even just like bringing it up and playing with the ideas of not like, you know, especially watching a lot of those older movies as a child, it was nice to see a character that wasn't just a gang member, slave, pimp. I mean, there were some great pimps out there. I had no clue that this movie would really impact me the way it did. And now that I'm older and obviously I have an opinion and I've, you know, I think about things, talk about things, watch you know. Basically, this movie is a f***ing bop. So when I say this movie, this movie, this movie should have never been made, I mean this movie should have never been made. Yo, this movie had a budget of $100,000. Now that may sound like a lot. Keep in mind that The Shining had $15 million a budget and Friday had three had 3.5 million yet I can't even get five dollars oh and here's some more tea for you sis daddy Townsend produced and financed this entire project not only did this man act as the lead and directed, he also walked into the restaurant, ordered everybody's food, and took the bill. That's a motherfucking baller and gentleman. And apparently, mans went through like, like multiple credit cards and like loans to get to get this movie made, which dedication on some other sh like. This is why we stand. That is fucking inspiring, like, dude. 
as as a film maker who's constantly trying to get into the industry to do the feature film stuff and like get to that point that and stat and that bro let me chill i'm getting all fired up that makes me want to go out and just film something and like just push a project it 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 drives me yo i swear so basically i love this movie come for the slave jokes but stay for the meta humor and crippling debt yeah man um it's a great movie it's about i made a tiktok um here's one that i made last night um maybe subscribe leave a comment like the video if it's not too much trouble um watch hollywood shuffle um i just wanted to talk about this movie because when i ask other film people and people who watch movies um and black people um no one has heard of it people haven't heard of it or they don't ever remember seeing it which you know grinds my gears anyway oh and as always, um, don't forget the aesthetics.